You saw the thumbnail and the title, and yes, it is true. The original party goer is back, and I think it's better than ever. If you remember, about five months ago, I made a video called Party Goers Are Back, and that was about the party goer entity being taken down and changed into like the sanguine Festivus virus. Well, now it's been decided to bring the old party goers back like they used to be here on the wiki dot but with a few great changes and in this video i'm going to be going over these changes and showing you how much this entity is changed for the better i think this is seriously one of my favorite ones now and i think that you all will enjoy it so without further ado let's get to the explanation and let's talk about the return of a very og entity but first, follow my Instagram if you want to see pictures of me and my YouTube friends and real life friends. And also subscribe to my other channel, Spoogly, if you want more like spooky internet horror, ARG, that kind of stuff. Self-promoting out of the way. Let's get to the video now. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the party goer entity as we now know them. And specifically, I'm going to be pointing out the different things that have changed about their physical appearance, their biology, their minds, and their home level, as well as some of their behaviors. You'll know the differences when you hear them. I'll point them out, but let's go ahead and get into it. Backrooms entity number 67, or the party goer, has been classified as a class IETS 5B rating, Chimera. So Chimera is like an entity that is highly intelligent and aggressive, and it poses a threat to anybody who encounters it. The actual word Chimera is a Greek word, and it's pretty much a mishmash of weird eldritch horror entities and faces pretty much the worst imaginable creature you could think of is a chimera and that's why the party goer entity has been classified as that thank you to raycon for sponsoring this video listen man i'm a youtuber so i sit at my desk all day and do nothing in a way that i found to counteract this sitting all day and doing nothing is by taking these long mysterious walks through my neighborhood and i will never be able to go on one of these walks without having Raycon on me at all times. Raycon is absurdly affordable, which in my opinion is the best part about them. They come in a bunch of cool colors as well, and blue is my favorite color, so that's perfect. They offer that crisp audio quality that we're all looking for at half the price of the leading premium brands. They also have a 32 hour battery life and an eight hour playtime, which means that I can listen to my 10 hours of Backrooms Humbuzz three times in a row without the battery dying. Also, I have a confession. My ears are huge. I have massive Dumbo ears, but Raycons have adjustable gel tips, so they're not gonna fall out, and they never do. They have great noise isolation as well, and their tap controls makes it super easy to change songs or shuffle playlists on the go without having to yank your phone out. Really, these things are amazing, and if you wanna snag yourself a pair and support the channel, you can visit the top link in the description below, buyraycon.com forward slash brugly to get 20% off free shipping of your Raycon order. That is 20% off and free shipping too for using the link in the top of the description. Once again, thank you to Raycon for sponsoring the video. And with all that said, let's get back into it, shall we? The new page is decorated with confetti and cakes and party hats, and is very similar to the first Party Gore page from a few years ago. It's actually really nostalgic. But the document opens with an excerpt from a Meg operative that says the following. The battle was brief. The closest entity made no noise and never flinched as our best swordsman lopped off both arms. Its eel-like appendages now wiggled on the concrete floor and snapped angrily at the air. Operative Tiger then followed through with a thrust that glanced off as if hitting stone. A hidden chest carapace on each partygoer flipped open, and a pair of anomalous arms with huge clawed hands shot out and gouged eyeballs and freed human entrails. The insides of these creatures were a nightmarish conglomeration of human, phobic centipede, and crustaceans. Our team was divided into two groups, screaming and dying. Only sheer luck and a fire axe to the head of a party goer turned the tide. The rumors are true. Party goers can turn people into them. Three of us made it out unscathed, but we had to kill six of our own before they transformed completely. Myra Oberlin, Meg Team, Party Over. So that was a document describing an attack that Party Goers recently did on several Meg operatives. And as you can see, a few new interesting things have come out about the biology of the Party Goer. 
Specifically, the part about its chest opening up and strange arms coming out of it, which is something to keep in mind. Anyways, overall, the partygoer's appearance is very similar to what you're familiar with. But now, we know a lot more about the biology and specifics of it. Partygoers are conscious and intelligence animate entities. They're able to think and act on their own or in packs of themselves. The hide and tissue of partygoers is shockingly similar to woven Kevlar from real life, which is to say it's very tough, very resilient, and hard to puncture. It also seems to be fireproof to an extent, especially the skin on the body itself. It's very resistant to stabs, to punches, to cuts, and it's very hard to take them down because of that. Partygoers are medium height to tall height, and they're pretty swift, even though they're not the fastest entity. But they used their smartness and their intelligence to hunt in packs and to use pack maneuvers to corner people. They have that yellow skin draped over a decently thin frame, eyes and mouths are slit cut into the skin, and they look like Play-Doh, to be honest. Their arms are long and they're spindly, and at the end of them is what seems to be mouths with teeth on the palms of their hands. The main new thing that you need to take into account is the strange arms that come out of the partygoer's chests and the arms of the actual partygoer itself. And the mouths on the end of their actual hands is how the partygoers transform their prey into other partygoers. They latch on, kind of like an octopus suction cup thing, and when they unalive you, they will then start the transformation. But more on the biology later, I will get into the rest of it, but let's talk about where the partygoers come from and where their home level seems to be. The partygoer origin level and habitat is actually up for debate amongst the people inside the back rooms. They are 100% able to move from level to level, just like wanderers can, using the same entrances and exits, but the actual home level, where they come from, is a mystery. Of course, the level's been named level fun, but what is level fun, and why do partygoers live and come from there? What we do know is that party decor or you know decorations and stuff near a door or window is a huge indicator as to an entrance to their home level. If you see balloons or streamers or tables or cakes near a door or an exit, do not open it up because the likelihood is if you do, you're going to walk right into their home. You also might see on any level homemade posters or something like that that advertises their home level as a fun place to go to. These posters typically have arrows and directions that lead to their entrances. There are a ton of theories about level fun. Some say that the entrance is on level 1 in the ceiling, where confetti sprays out of a light fixture, and all you have to do is no clip into it to get there. Again, it's unknown if these are true, but they're most likely are not true because there's so many rumors and false information from partygoers themselves that have altered the documents about them, we can't even tell what's real and what's fake. Now, when partygoers began to pop up way back in the day, the leading theory on what was causing this damage and this massacre to the wanderers was that there was some tribe of cannibals or this group of cannibal people that were eating others. People thought there was a cult or something like that lurking in some kind of level and luring people there to consume them. Which is a crazy theory, I, I don't think that would be my first thought, but most people thought that way until they started seeing the partygoer attacked victims begin to turn into partygoers themselves. They started to see the people turn yellow. And once you start seeing a person turn yellow, yeah, it's over. Anyways, back to the partygoer biology. Yellow partygoers are not the actual only colors that you might see. You might see a red or blue or green or white one, but those are very rare and typically only on level fun. The only thing consistently the same about all the partygoers is that crude smile carved into their leathery skin. The smile is said to be the exact same as a phobic centipede's smile, which you remember a long time ago, those are those huge centipede creatures that are very sadistic and they hunt humans and they trick you with nostalgic things and they have a smile just like the partygoers one. It's horrifying to think about. The shape of a partygoer is roughly humanoid, but their legs are very thick and blocky, and they kind of awkwardly wobble around, but are very swift for their awkward size. The transformation process from human to partygoer begins the second one of these entities reaches out one of its arms with its hand-mouth thing and latches onto you. The only way to stop it is by despawning yourself. 
if you know what I mean. That's the only way to get out of it. You cannot use almond water. Nothing can stop or slow the transformation from human to party goer. It's impossible. Party goers are downright sadistic hunters. They prey on wanderers for sport and to increase their numbers. They're kind of like orca whales from real life. They enjoy tormenting and playing with all their food. And their food is us in this case. So how does one defeat a large apex predator with thick skin that has knowledge of the back rooms and has other members of its pack hunting you? Now, luckily for you, I know how to do it. So I'm just going to tell you right now. A few weaknesses have been found. Those long arms they have with the mouths and their hands, you're going to have to cut them off. You're going to have to take an axe or a sword and just cut off the arm. That is the best way to avoid being infected or attacked by one of these entities. If you do that, you'll have a much better chance of actually surviving. The next weakness is once a party goer opens its chest cavity thing where arms come out of it. Once that cavity opens, you need to attack the entity in its face and head area. And doing this will seemingly neutralize the party goer threat. It'll weaken it pretty much. Once a human starts to turn into a party goer, their hearing begins to get reduced, their taste and sight and touch, and the ability to feel pain start to decay, and all of their sensory things like sight and, and sound are turned down. And then eventually they'll turn into the party goer, and that's when you'll get adopted into a party goer pack or group. Party goers seem to communicate through some sort of shortwave telepathy. Again, we're not sure how this happens, but they definitely know what each other are thinking without vocalizing at all. That's how they're so aggressive and how they're so tactile when they're chasing prey. Kind of like Utah Raptors or Velociraptors are when they're hunting in packs. Now, party goers, again, have a very strange and unnerving pastime of eating cakes and sweets, but not the sweet kind, the meat kind if you know what I'm saying. There are alleged videos of these cakes being formed. I can't show them here, obviously, because it's disgusting, but I'm going to describe them to you because now we know how party goers create their sweet meat treats. Fair warning, this is disgusting and disturbing, but stick with it if you want to hear. When party goers end a human, they use their suctiony mouth things on the end of their hands to scrape and mince the sweet meat and tissues off of that individual. They then suck up those liquids into their hand mouth thing, and then they take that over to a cupcake tin or a cake pan, and they dump all that liquid and stuff in that pan. Other party goers will get the rest of the juices and meats and digest them into this frosting consistency liquid. Then they regurgitate that liquid on top of the cake that they just put in the pan. Then they'll bake it in an oven. And it's said that the cakes have a sweet red velvet taste. But when you eat it, you'll know that something is very, very, very wrong. Do not eat any cakes you find at all in the back rooms. So now we know a little bit more about the physical description, the motives, the level, and the inner workings of the partygoer entity. And we also know that the partygoers somehow have the ability to alter information about themselves online whether it's to make themselves seem better or to lure people closer to their home so they can turn them into cakes, we don't know. But with all the info I just told you, if you encounter a party goer, honestly, <laughs> you just gotta run because that's your best chance to live. They're pretty nearsighted and they're not really that fast and they're sprinting. So if you find yourself cornered, run. If you're trapped and there's a bunch of them in front of you, the only thing you can do is fight back and try to cut their eyes or cut those arms off. That's literally the only thing you can do. Never hesitate when you encounter one, though, because they will attack you with their hands and arms and stuff. Just run away and don't forget to have a little fun along the way. You know what I'm saying? So in summary, that is the new party goer entity. It's the large yellow blocky creature that hunts down humans in, in packs for sport turns them into cupcakes and pastries, and with their suction teeth hands, they consume you. They lure people to their level, fun, and they have giant arms and weird centipede features and a huge smile carved into their yellow face. Overall, they're disgusting, they're sadistic, and I freaking love it. I mean, they're amazing. I, I think this is one of the best rewrites of an entity that I've ever seen. I love how much more horror was plugged into these creatures now. I think it needed that seriousness. The party goers have always been goofy, but scary, but now it's even scarier and I really like it.
Anyways, I'm done rambling. Hope you enjoyed the new entity, or I guess the old entity. If you did, leave a like on the video. Tell me what your favorite thing about it is in the comments. I'm interested to see what you have to say. Let me know if you enjoyed this video too, of course. And let me know what other entities and creatures and levels that I should go over. Like I said, I personally love this creature. I always have liked it, but now I love it even more because I feel like it's been taken more seriously. And I just hope to see more entities be like this. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.